Welcome everyone. This is the summer solstice conducted by the Green Sanctuary Committee. On this day, we commemorate when Old Soul, our sun, reaches its highest point in the sky. This is also the longest day of the year and ushers in the growing season for most plants and crops. Let me explain. Through the four seasons, the earth revolves around the sun at a near constant distance of 93 million miles. But its axis of rotation determining the length of each day or night is tilted at an angle of 23 and a half degrees from its axis of revolution. Therefore, at our latitude in the New York area, the sun attains a maximum angle of 73 degrees above the horizon. The exact moment when the sun is highest in the sky is 12 noon wherever you live. What you hear in the radio is the approximation based on time zones. We are celebrating the summer solstice, which is the start of the summer season. The Native Americans had no clocks, but they used the environment to measure time. Rituals and special ceremonies were scheduled by nature's clocks. Summer is a time to engage our Mother Earth, the connection and the cultivation to the divine powers and energy around us. Taking only what we need to live in harmony and balance with the planet. Live as if our life is a ceremony. As with all Native American ceremonies, we begin with prayer. This prayer is called the Summer Solstice Prayer. It's the midsummer's evening, the shortest of night, where the planet is blessed with the greatest of light. The sun and its power sharing its wealth with the earth glowing in abundance and health. The tree leaves are green and the birds are in song. The days are as warm as they are long. We honor the animals, the plants, and all living things. The sun and the water, and for the life that they bring. May you find well-being, and may you find peace. And after the days of solstice, the earth life does decrease. May the blessing of the sun be yours, I pray and the light warm your heart and your soul every day. Storytelling is a very large part of Native American culture and parts of ceremonies. Stories hold meanings, messages, and teaches. Solstice, the sun, new life, animal, plants, Summer, coming out of the darkness. I would like to share with you a retelling of a story from the Cherokee tradition. The story is called, Grandmother Spider Brings Light. When the earth was first made, it was very dark and the animals were afraid. One day, Bear said, I haven't seen the light on the other side of the world. But people will not share it. Perhaps we could get some for ourselves. The animals thought this was a splendid idea and started to discuss who should go first. I'll go, said the fox. Fox went, took a piece of the light into his mouth, but it was so hot it burned his mouth and he dropped it. And the fox still has a black mouth to this day. Possum tried next. He wrapped his tail and tried to drag it back, but
but it was too hot and he dropped it. That is why no possum has fur on its tail. Crow said, let me try. And he went to get the light. But when he got close, it singed all his feathers and he turned black. He was so afraid he ran away. Finally, Grandmother Spider said, I'll go. When she reached the light, she was surprised of how hot it was. She thought of a plan. She began to spin and spin and spin her silky web. Soon she had enough for a bag. She approached the light and quick as a flash, she tucked the light into her bag. When she got back, the animals were triumphant. Hooray for Grandmother Spider! Hooray for Grandmother Spider! They all shouted. Grandmother Spider was very happy to give them light. We should hang it in the sky so that we can all be warmed by it. The other animals thought that was a good idea. But how to get it into the sky? I'll go, said the vulture. He took the bag of light and put it on his head. It was hot, but he could stand it. He flew higher and higher, and the bag got hotter and hotter. He climbed higher, and his feathers turned black. Still higher, and the feathers on his head burned off. Still higher, and his head turned red. At the last possible second, he threw the light into the sky as high as he could, and the sun hung bright and beautiful, warming all the land.
Native American tribes perform ceremonies to celebrate the longest day of the year, the summer solstice. The most well-known ceremony, however, is the sun dance ceremony. The sun dance, believed to have originated with the Lakota Sioux, is a ceremony that lasted 28 days, with the final four to eight days with intense festivities. Ceremonies vary from tribe to tribe, but we all share a common feature, the Ramapos included. There is singing, there is dance, there is drumming, there is food, followed by prayer and meditation. Preparation for the sun dance includes the cutting and the raising of a tree. The tree is considered a visible connection between heaven and earth. Teepees are set up in a circle to represent the cosmos. And that is also practiced by many tribes. The Ramapo has teepees, they have sweat lodges, and they are also preparing for the summer solstice as I speak. Participants abstain from all food and water during the dances. And these dances can take hours. Bodies are often decorated in symbolic colors, almost like the medicine wheel, when you see the colors of the medicine wheel. They paint their body in red, representing the sunset. Blue, the sky. Yellow, lightning. White, the light. Black, night. The short time of happiness, of song and flowers, is the time of short nights and long days. It evens out the suffering of the long, dark, and cold winters here under the northern sky. In times of this northern joy, when dawn extends a welcoming arm to dusk, an elder told a story to the kids gathered round. This is the story. Do you know the light source in the vestibule in the home of the old one of the sky? Right now, the light has gone to sleep, but already you can see the rays of it peeking from the east, where it is ready to come out any minute. Do you know to whom the hands that greet the sun when it comes down from the sky and sends it to sleep belong to? Do you know the hands which wake up the sun and relight it again before it sets up for another trek across the sky? The old one of the sky had two trustworthy disciples who had been gifted with eternal youth. When the sun had finished its very first journey across the sky, the old one said to dusk, Into your care I will give the setting sun. You have to douse it every night so it will not harm anybody on its way to slumber. The next morning, when the sun should have started its next journey across the vast expanse of the blue sky, the old one said to Dawn, Your job will be to relight the sun every morning and prepare it to its daily travels. And so it was. Both of the immortal souls did what they were asked, and the sun was up in the sky every day, not missing any days even when it barely peeked out across the horizon along the long, dark of the winter. On days like these, it finishes its journey sooner and gets enough time to sleep, because the morning time comes later on as well. When the spring comes, the sun will wake up nature with its warm rays, and it will realize that from now on, till the autumn comes again, 
it has more work than it has been used to. And the summer comes, when the sun does not go to sleep at all, and dusk gives the sun straight to dawn who relights its dimmed glow again. It is the time of the summer solstice, when the world is filled with flowers and song, light and joy. It is the time when both disciples of the Old One look into each other's deep, dark eyes for the longest of times. As dusk hands the sun over to dawn, their hands touch in soft caress, and their lips meet for the briefest of kisses. But the old one never sleeps, and they noticed what had happened in the brief glimpse of the night and gathered both of them during the next day. They smiled to both disciples and said, Dear ones, I am happy with your work, and it is my deepest of wishes that you will be happy together. You two should wed and continue doing your jobs as a married couple. Both of them answered in unison. Oh, please, old one, do not ruin our joy. Let us be young and in love forever as we are as our love will stay fresh and young forever. The old one smiled at them again and blessed their decision and agreed to let them continue as they wanted. And ever since then, there is a time in the year, four short weeks, when dawn meets dusk under the dying light of day Dusk sets the dimming sun into the hands of dawn, and their hands meet with a soft touch, and their lips meet in a sweet kiss. Dusk's cheeks are red, and the sky reflects their joy and excitement to the mortals by glowing reddish until dawn relights the sun again, and the yellow glow will greet the sky dome. The Old One knows the importance of this meeting and fills the world with beautiful flowers and the sweetest sounds as dusk rests their head against Dawn's chest a tad too long. In brief moments, they are happy to meet, but they have to separate once again so they can meet again next year. Smudging is another important part of Native American ceremony. We smudge at the beginning of powwows, we smudge our homes, ourselves, our family, friends, those that are gathered and we wish to bless. Smudging is a way of purifying, to bless and to restore balance. Last year we were all outside on the beautiful grounds of UUCSR during the so summer solstice celebration. This year we are all sheltered, not being able to be together, but still sharing the sense of community and being fortunate enough to come together through the world of Zoom. Although this is not the traditional way of smudging, I still want to incorporate it into the celebration because I do feel it's important. You may not be able to smell the beautiful herb of sage or have the smoke envelope your body. But as I say the prayer, I am hoping that you can close your eyes and experience the blessing. May your hands be cleansed, that they may create all beautiful things. May your feet be cleansed, that they may take you where you most need to be. May your heart be cleansed, 
that you may hear its message clearly. May your throat be cleansed that you may speak rightly when words are needed. May your eyes be cleansed that you may see the signs and the wonder of the world. May you and the space be washed clean by the smoke of these fragrant plants. And may that same smoke carry your prayers and or intentions spiraling to the heavens. Aho. I would like to share with you a few suggestions for some rituals to celebrate the summer solstice that you can do by yourself with family members that you are sheltered in with. You want to be safe. You can plant some herbs and flowers in your garden or in your kitchen if you don't have a garden. You can gather in a circle with your family, six feet apart, and exchange songs, stories, get up, dance, sing, enjoy the longer days and the sun. You can also make a prayer stick or intention stick. You put out your prayer or intention for peace. Peace where there is no peace. For abundance in the country where there is poverty. Just something to put back your intentions and renew. This summer will be unlike any other summers we've ever had. My family has and will be following the guidelines recommended by the World Health Organization and the CDC. With that in mind, my intentions for this summer is to devote more time to my favorite hobby, which is organic vegetable gardening. I like to end with this question. What are your plans for this summer that is enriching or special for you? Thank you. In closing, as with all our ceremonies, celebrations, Native American always, as I said before, open in prayer and they close in prayer with gratitude, reverence. I chose this prayer. It's a Cherokee prayer. And I thought it would be appropriate in light of the turmoil that we are in today. Oh, great spirit, who made all races. Look kindly upon the whole human family and take away the arrogance and the hatred which separates us. Aho. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay well, stay safe.